Best internal temperature for roasting a turkey, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That taken care of, we're going to look at corporate profits here. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by UKG, an HR payroll and workforce management solution designed to help make a fairy tale workplace a reality. UKG, our purpose is people. I'm David Brancaccio on a Thanksgiving morning. Let's catch up now on a key engine of the economy, profits at companies. So far, firms on the S&P 500 list have reported that profits have grown about 4% on average in the quarter gone by. That's striking given all the expert predictions the U.S. would be in recession by now. We are not. Something else notable in this cascade of profit and losses is what analysts were looking for when they questioned company leaders about the road ahead. Marketplace's Novo Safo has that. It seems obvious that if you're a drug company manufacturing diabetes treatments, which are increasingly used for weight loss, these are known as GLP-1 drugs, then you'd expect analysts, which are tasked with forecasting future performance, to ask you about those drugs. But in recent calls with analysts, company leaders in other sectors fielded questions about the drugs as well, such as PepsiCo CEO Ramon LaGuarda. So far, the impact is negligible in our business. There's obviously a lot of question marks with regards to these obesity drugs. And Hershey CEO Michelle Buck. Certainly there are opportunities around portion size and pack type, and I think a lot of companies have been focused on that as you think about the potential impact of GLP-1s. Medical device companies were quizzed about potentially fewer procedures, health insurers about higher costs if they have to pay for expensive prescriptions. Overall, GLP-1s were mentioned twice as often than during second quarter results, according to a Reuters analysis. What's being talked about less often? Recession. A separate analysis by data firm FactSet finds the least mention of recession risks in earnings calls dating back to the end of 2021. Of course, it matters what sector companies are in, with real estate firms talking about recession the most. I'm Novasafo for Marketplace. Reporting profits in the days ahead, Salesforce, Kroger, and Campbell Soup. The outfit that insures bank deposits in America, the FDIC, normally gets headlines when it rescues a failing bank. But now the chair of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, Martin Gruenberg, is facing tough questions from members of Congress after published reports of a culture of bad behavior at that agency, including sexual harassment and discrimination. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer has that. The tough questions came after reports in the Wall Street Journal of sexual harassment and racial discrimination at the FDIC. The agency's chair, Martin Gruenberg, was grilled about the allegations at congressional hearings last week. William Isaac headed the FDIC in the early 1980s. He says employees who are abusive should be fired, and the FDIC's top brass has to be on guard against abuse. Are they active enough? Probably not. If if the things are going on that I'm hearing about. They probably are not active enough, and they need to up the game, because this kind of behavior is just unacceptable. In his congressional testimony, Chair Gruenberg said what he called the horrendous experiences of some FDIC employees were unacceptable. William Isaac knows Gruenberg and doesn't think he would have turned a blind eye. I don't believe he would have ignored that. I don't think that's him. The FDIC has hired an outside law firm to conduct an internal review. Some Senate Democrats are calling for an independent probe. The House Financial Services Committee is conducting its own investigation. And some Republicans are calling on Chair Gruenberg to resign. Isaac says Gruenberg serves as a tiebreaker on the five-member FDIC board. And if he did go... I'd be pretty positive there wouldn't be an agreement on some of the hot political topics of the day. Things like whether to require banks to hold bigger capital cushions in case of an emergency. But Isaac says the FDIC would still be able to do its job of supervising banks if it were without a chairman temporarily. I'm Nancy Marshall Genzer for Marketplace. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Charles Schwab. Schwab believes every investor deserves to work with a firm they can count on. That's why Schwab has financial consultants ready to serve their clients, plus professional answers and 24-7 live help. Learn more at schwab.com. And by How We Survive. Climate change is dire, but it does not have to be world-ending. New season of How We Survive from Marketplace, available wherever you get your podcasts. Russia's war on Ukraine forced millions of Ukrainian women and children to move towards safety. 
This displacement has contributed to the economic upheaval. For the women who have stayed, lives are being altered, many taking on new roles that were previously done by men. The BBC's Claire Williamson reports. Amongst the men working here, a relatively recent recruit to life underground. It's what I've always wanted to do, right from being a little girl. Tetiana works for Ukraine's private power company, DTEK. I used to see my dad and my granddad come out of the mine all dirty and used to wonder why. What's it like? My dad is really proud of me and I know my grandfather would be proud of me too because I am a machine operator like him. Like the energy sector the world over, its workforce is mainly male. That is beginning to change. Before the war, Tetiana's job was above ground, measuring methane levels in the mines. But now, this is her working day. I get to the mine at 6 in the morning and go to the office to get my instructions for the day. Then I go to the women's sauna and change my clothes. I pick up a helmet and lamp and my emergency kit. Then, at 6.40, I go down in the lift to the mine. I take a little train, we call it a carriage, and I go to my spot and take over from the girl whose shift has ended. It's a far cry from her previous job on the surface. Women doing jobs vacated by men who've gone to fight a war. This, of course, is nothing new. Women war workers in this country will be interested to see how their opposite numbers in America are doing man-sized jobs on the testing grounds of a Maryland arms factory. In World War II, women in Europe and North America moved into factories to take up roles making ships, planes and weapons. But that conflict didn't see women fighting on front lines. But in Ukraine, in 2023, it's different. Women are volunteering to join the army to fight alongside men. In fact, 20% of Ukraine's armed forces are female. I'm the BBC's Claire Williamson for Marketplace. All right, take care on this Thanksgiving. I'm David Brancaccio with the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.